Hi, I hope you're all well today. And thank you for joining this first session, which is on Juniper's MIST AI series. I'm David Townsend, a partner sales engineer here at Juniper Networks, delivering this webinar on behalf of our partner, Hardware, who are Juniper Elite Plus partner. And if you have any questions or queries, please ask the experts at Hardware on sales at hardware.com and they'll be happy to answer those questions and queries that you may have. So let's focus on the agenda for the next 20 to 30 minutes. First, we're going to discuss what is Juniper's true north. And as these next few sessions are about Juniper's MIST, it is first obviously a good idea to discuss what is Juniper's MIST AI solution. And following this, why and how is it different to the other solutions from other vendors out there? And of course, we will then discuss some of the benefits and use case stories and the success that we've had with Juniper's MIST throughout the industry uh, in a few short slides. And of course, summarizing at the end. So let's begin. At Juniper, we have a complete client to cloud enterprise solution that encompasses all of these elements that you see here, which ultimately delivers the best IT and user experiences. And the Juniper Experience First solution has the following network components. First, AI driven enterprise, which includes wired and wireless access and session smart SD WAN, all driven by MIST AI. There's also automated WAN solutions for linking different offices and data center facilities with reliable connectivity. And then there's the cloud ready data center for scalable connectivity and simplified underlay overlay management with assurance. And of course, we have our connected security strategy, which is a common bond that ties together all of the above by extending visibility, threat intelligence and enforcement across our entire portfolio. So in essence, our true north is experience first networking. That is Juniper's true north. And when we talk about MIST, we like to use the, we like to refer to experience, user experience specifically. And let's put this into context. First, I'm sure we've all done this. We walk and buy a switch, a router, whatever it may be, and you see these flashing green LED lights in the background. And as the terminology goes, flashing green port is up. But up is not an indicator of good. It's not, it just means it's, it's passing traffic successfully or unsuccessfully, you do not know. Also, is the configuration correct? By simply looking at a blinking LED light, how are you possibly to know if the configuration is correct? Obviously you can't. Now, configuration is important. Even if you just look at it from a layer two perspective, where you have IP phones or IoT devices, or access points connecting to a switch, just for example, that device will be associated to some type of VLAN. And if that VLAN is not configured correctly, or it's not associated for routing via some kind of trunk port, then that traffic which is connected to the AP, to that server, to the IoT device, whatever it may be, ultimately to that switch is black hole. It's not going anywhere and obviously you're not going to know that by looking at a blinking LED light. Ultimately, what is the user experience? You cannot ascertain what the user experience is by looking at obviously blinking LED lights. And so these are some of the questions that we're going to demystify about the MIST AI solution in these in these sessions. How MIST is different and how does it actually tell a user, an operations team administrator what the user experience actually is. So first, a little bit of history. Well, we know that the world has changed. Networks have changed so much over 10, 20, 30 and plus years. They've changed drastically. But the access networks, they haven't changed anywhere near as much. And if you look at the history of the wireless domain, the wireless technology, Wi-Fi was, was standardized in the IEEE um, 802.11, various standards initially 802.11a, 802.11b in around, around about 1997. 
and this was known as the Wi-Fi first generation or generation one. And obviously at this time, different vendors with the Intel processors, etc., put these wireless adapters into the laptops to allow these devices to connect to different access points. And so between 2003, 2007, there was uh, uh, quite a lot of activity, both from a vendor point of view and from a standards point of view. There were different standards released throughout these uh, five or so years. Um, the 82.11, various standards, the, 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 the N, the AC, so on and so forth. But additionally, we also, you also saw other vendors like Cisco buying Meraki, Ruckus, Airspace, Aruba, all adopting their controller-based solutions, which were appropriate at this time. And I say that because if you then look at 2007 to 2016, there's a few things that did or didn't happen. One thing that did happen, or a few things that did happen, is that from 2007, the iPhone or the, app or the Android phone was created. And additionally, the Amazon Web Services was released where enterprise uh, users could adopt uh, web-based services to obviously deliver agility, elasticity, and ultimately drive drive the cost down. From a standards point of view, one thing, or well, a few things that did not happen was what we call a desert of innovation. Really not much happened. There was, of course, updates, you know, new, faster, as such, rates being, being released, but there wasn't really anything about. Well, why is this important? Because if you just look at the timeline, then you will see that the Cisco, Cisco Meraki, Ruckus, Aruba, their solutions were actually developed before Amazon Web Services, before the iPhone, before Android. So by nature, they are actually legacy. They ha have, of course, been updated and matured over time, but at their core, they are a controller. MIST is different. So MIST was um stand uh was was created uh from 2016 and it was created by these individuals here and as you could see they've all got cisco written under them so they were actually uh, uh cisco uh, founders and ctos of actually uh the access portfolio vp of products vp of sales vp of marketing so these individuals here have these experts, I should say, have you know, 100 plus patents or patents uh, for themselves within the 82.11 standard and all the variations there between. They are actually known as the godfathers of Silicon Valley. They are incredibly experienced, incredibly knowledgeable and very passionate about Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi technology and the solution. And when they're at Cisco and you know, being the founders of uh, the access portfolio, they wanted to do things differently because they could see what was happening with Cisco and Cisco Meraki. And so they actually um, formed MIST, which was initially funded by, ironically, Cisco and Google uh, investments, Cisco investments and Google investments, uh, respectively. But to quote uh, this, this uh, person, I never like to say his name because I always feel like I'm uh, not doing him enough justice, but uh, I will read this. You can't look at the competition and say you're going to do it better. You have to look at the competition, and say you're going to do it differently. And when you look at the missed solution compared to Cisco, compared to Aruba, we are not looking at faster processing. We're not looking at faster buffers. We're not looking at more controllers being connected. We're not looking at doing the same thing, only better. We're looking at doing things completely different. And that is what the godfathers of Silicon Valley actually did with MIST. So to look at it from an architectural point of view, these are the differences between the other solutions vendors out there and what Juniper's MIST actually is. So Juniper's MIST is a cloud-based microservices solution. Those are two big key points there. And what do I mean by that? Microservices, so if you look at assurance, management, sensors, location, RRM or radio resource management, and there are of course more, these are all microservices which form or create that uh, the, the, the Juniper MIST 
solution, the, the, the MIST AI, which is in the cloud. Why does that matter? Well, what we can do is we can take down any of these microservices and the whole solution remains up and running available 24 7 365 days a year it never ever goes down and because of this architecture as well mist is incredibly agile we are able to deliver new updates new features new enhancements every week every week that is astonishing if you look at how networks are today and how quickly they are evolving. Juniper Mist AI can keep up to pace with those changes and it is cloud based. It's up there. It's available. It's not cloud managed. It's cloud based. And if you compare this to other solutions vendors, uh, other vendor solutions out there, there are of course access points. Of course, there, there, there's access points for Mist as well to, to allow the wireless connectivity. But you then have the controllers which control the access points, which may be standalone or lightweight. Um, and you will have a certain amount of controllers based on their specs and the amount, a certain amount of APs that can connect to each controller. And you have the proprietary uh, tunneling protocols to and from the APs, uh, which is where users get locked into different vendors. Then you have the mobility masters controlling the, mo the mobility controllers, and you have these add-ons as well, such as analytics, location engine, net site data collector, airwipe enterprise appliances, beacons, cape sensors. The beacons typically physical, um, you know, with battery and they're, they're very, uh, uh, that can be cumbersome to, to manage and um, you know to make sure they don't go missing. And then you've got these different cloud uh, solutions as well. So if you just look at that, it's, it, it just seems complicated. It doesn't seem like it's a unified single solution. MIST is everything under the same cloud, everything in one solution, everything available, agile and able to keep pace with those network changes. So. We are with MIST disrupting the enterprise market with Wi-Fi and switching capabilities that the MIST actually encompasses. And only Juniper with the MIST, we can deliver the following benefits. Modern cloud. So we are able, as I said, to deliver weekly updates with absolutely no downtime for 100% API support driven by microservices architecture. We also have AI. AI is the heart of MIST. I'm a little bit of a car man and uh, a car fanatic, and I love Aston Martins, DB9s, beautiful cars. But I know that I'm never going to be able to afford an Aston Martin. I have, as most family people do, a Nissan Qashqai or, or equivalent. Now, if I take an Aston Martin, Aston Martin badge, wheels, alloys, the paint, and put it onto my, my Nissan Qashqai, it might look like an Aston Martin, but the engine is still that of a Qashqai. It's not the same thing. And MIST has AI at its, at its core. The engine is AI, and with AI ops, we're able MIST is able to deliver what we call MARVIS, which is an AI driven system. And this allows operators and uh, administration teams to deliver uh, IT operations by identifying proactively or even maybe reactively network events and to remediate those issues, those events a lot more quickly to reduce that mean time to resolution. And what is unique as well is a cloud based dynamic packet capture. Packet capturing isn't unique, of course, but the ability to uh, capture packets as an event actually happens, whether it be an authorization event, the user's not authenticated or DNS going down or some other network event, that being delivered by the cloud, by cloud-based solution is absolutely unique. And we also have SOEs or service level expectations. So the ability to go into site organization, switch AP or even user insights to see what is their experience like and what can I do as the operations team to make their experience more better. 
And we also have a patented BOE with virtual beacons. No longer physical beacons needed. We could place virtual beacons on the MIST, uh, on the MIST portal and they will be uh, uh, seen as such by the smart devices, by the mobile devices when you're connected to the MIST network. Now we actually call these the We Dare slides because we dare the other vendors out there to, to have a modern cloud-based solution which is 100% API with weekly update pushes with a microservice architecture. We dare the and we challenge the other vendors out there to have AI ops, AI at its core, at its engine, as its engine, with dynamic packet capturing from a cloud-based solution. And we challenge the other vendors to actually show that they can go into the amount of and show the amount of insights that MIST can, whether it be organizational site switch, AP, or even user-based insights. And MIST is so different. It's so powerful, powerful and so agile that Juniper with MIST, we are now leaders of the leader part of the magic quadrant. Uh, this may or may not be new news, but this is important because with MIST, we have absolutely just disrupted the, the uh, enterprise wide and wireless uh, in infrastructure and we are winning. Now, what does What's what's inside of this in terms of portfolio? Well, it's a complete portfolio under a single microservices cloud with a variety of value add added subscriptions. Think of this as an a la carte menu. You pick and choose what you need based on your requirements, based on what you need. So there's obviously APs for indoor and outdoor use, Wi-Fi 4, Wi-Fi 5, Wi-Fi 6, or specific IoT. Uh, uh, APs, you have the Juniper EX switches, we have our SD-WAN for the WAN infrastructure using our session smart routing and we have these licenses on top. So if you uh, only want to equip your network with APs, you, you're obviously not going to want or need the wired assurance and the WAN assurance. You want to only have the Wi-Fi assurance. And maybe as well use engagement asset tracking so the capability to track where your assets are on the map to making sure to make sure that they are obviously where they should be and that they're being used and utilized to to get obviously get the, the maximum uh return on you on your investment we could do analytics and using the ai ops the mark the marvis virtual network assistant the ability to ask uh human-based language questions to a machine and the machine will come back to you, MIST will come back to you with through Marvis and, and give you the response uh, that, that you need. So if I was to ask how is how is users David's experience, Marvis will go away using AI and analyze all the data, all the telemetry it gets via the APs, via the switches, etc. to then say how my user experience is. Is it good or is it bad? And if, if it's bad, what can the operational team do to remediate those those events, those issues that I'm experiencing. So what should you also take away from this, this slide? Marv, uh, MIST is from a wireless, wired and SD-WAN. So not only is it using AI and microservices, but it is delivering the experience from the wireless, through the wired infrastructure and over the SD band, i.e. from the client to the cloud. And in terms of where it's used, well, it's, it's used for all aspects of day zero, day one, and day two plus operations. So via a single click, you can onboard or activate various APs and EX switches. APs can be online in a matter of seconds. In a matter of seconds, all you need is a smart uh, smartphone, with a camera to scan a QR code on the back of the AP, and that's it. It's online, MIS sees it, and immediately users can start connecting to the AP for the network uh, connectivity, and you can then start analyzing the experiences over that AP, over the wired infrastructure, maybe over the SD-WAN, and even down to the client, client. And for the day two operations, we are able to set thresholds for different service level expectations, whether it be wireless, wired, 
or WAN, you can set different thresholds and you can monitor real time those different service level expectations whilst providing uh, anomaly detection, i.e. the capability to be alerted when a certain threshold is crossed. And we also have, as I mentioned, dynamic packet capture and IoT segmentation. And if I focus on a little bit more on, 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 on Marvis, the AI operations, Marvis can proactively identify and remediate those events which will impact the experience over the network. So you can see on the display here that there are actually 32 actions at an organizational level. So it doesn't matter if you've got 10 sites, one site or 100 sites, there are 32 actions that the operations team needs to need to uh, act on to in increase that user experience. Or it could be down to a specific site level. And you can see here on this display that from a connectivity point of view, there's 17 uh, in total actions. DNS, ARP failure, DHCP failure, authentication failure, and then you've got different categories for layer one, access point switch, gateway, security application, and, 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 and even clients, sorry. But if you were to click on uh, DNS, for example, it will then tell you what sites are experiencing these uh, events that require action in. What is the reason behind it? And then you can actually view more details into each one of those uh, uh, events and ultimately remediate those issues to deliver a faster mean time to resolution. So, who is using MIST? Well, if we just look at it from a UK uh, perspective, we have some of the largest enterprises in the UK which have chosen the Juniper MIST solution. And these aren't small names. Dunelm, Ocado, Barclays, BP, Aston Martin, all using Juniper Mist. And if you look at how long Juniper Mist has been around, yeah, a few years, but certainly not as long as the other uh, solutions vendors out there. And yet we are number one in the magic quadrant. We are leaders of the magic quadrant in the wireless and wired infrastructure uh, domain. And we have these huge uh, references as well. And why did they choose Juniper Mist? Because of the user experience, because of the AI driven operations, because of the microservices cloud capability, because of the BOE or Bluetooth location energy location services. And if I elaborate on these a little bit more, the user experience, because Mist, we are the only vendor which focuses on, it's our true north, which focuses on the experience of the end user, not just looking at making sure the network is configured and that all ports are up, but to focus on the experience to make sure that the network is, yes, operating as it should be, but it's actually driving the experience and up. And of course, customer satisfaction and user satisfaction is up and uh, the associated benefits that they actually bring. AI operations using Marvis to ask natural based human questions or for more te technical user uh, query language questions to identify network events which are impacting experiences, which will identify how to remediate those events to drive down the mean time resolution, to increase the user experience. And the microservices, is, yes, MIST is cloud-based. Yes, it's microservices architecture. It's an agile weekly updates. No one else can deliver a, uh, a weekly updates from a cloud based solution with 0% downtime. And the BOE location services, whether, so whether you use the v, uh, BOE location services to track company assets, network testers, or from a health point, health market point of view, uh, if you look at a hospital with all the different uh, you know, sophisticated uh, pieces of equipment like defibrillators, just for example, which save lives, the ability to locate where is the nearest, nearest defibrillator and what path do I need to do or take via the blue dots to get there will save lives. Or using location services, user engagement, 
if we look at the current circumstances where people are slowly returning to the office via the COVID-19 epidemic, some offices are implementing zone-based security, i.e. only a certain amount of users are allowed in a particular room at any one time. So they assign a specific threshold or limit on the amount of people that are allowed in that room. And using user engagement on MIST, a manager can be alerted when the threshold is alerted, uh, it is breached, sorry, and take the take the immediate actions to obviously you know, reduce the number of headcounts in that room to keep people safe and healthy. But let's focus on uh, BP. So why did BP choose MIST from Juniper Solutions? Well, lowest total cost to ownership. That is one of the big three points here. What do we mean by this? Well, if you look at the way petroleum stations are, are moving, they're all going electric with these electric pumps uh, popping up in hotels, etc. over time, but they're also obviously popping up and being uh, built into pe uh, petrol stations all over the country. Now, users uh, actions are going to be different where historically and even today you, you, you drive your car into a garage and you fill up quickly, go in, you pay, you drive off, done in five, five or so minutes. With electric pumps, it's going to be different. The users are going to be there for 20, 30, 40, 50 plus minutes, maybe even hours. And so what BP wanted to do is they wanted to use MIST to actually engage with the users who are using their forecourts and using uh, location services and the APIs, the 100% APIs that MIST has to actually interact with the users and offer them discounts, i.e. David Townsend, we can see that you're on electric pump one. If you come into the forecourt, we'll give you 20% off your next coffee. And with that, they were not only able to drive more business, but because they were able to generate a better user experience for the users on their forecourt, forecourt over time, it was calculated that it was the lowest total cost of ownership and it went in line with what the, uh, the petroleum uh, pe petrol stations, diesel stations and electric stations will be evolving to, i.e. all electric over time. And here's just a few more names which are outside of the UK, but also inside the UK, but globally. So obviously some big names on here. Note, talking about total cost of ownership, mean time to resolution down by 96, 96 percent on an average ticket. That is massive. Dramatically decreased rollout time, 85 percent reduced site visits. So Gap have hundreds of stores worldwide, if not more, and they do not have a, a, a suite of engineers at each site. So when a, a, a site is experiencing network connect connectivity issues, whether it be wireless, wired or WAN, they have to deploy an engineer or a team to go onto site, which will take time and money to reduce, uh, to, to resolve that network issue, whatever it may be. With MIST, you can see what the network event is using Marvis asking uh, human-based language questions or query languages to determine what that event is, and then to actually determine what do you need to do to resolve that. So at Juniper, we know that experience is the first and most important requirement for networking in the cloud era. And to this end, Juniper is focused on putting our users, the network architects, the builders, the operators at the very center of all that we do. And so that's their users, the salesperson, given a, a demo over Zoom, the associates using a POS scanner in a store, the students watching Netflix in their dorm rooms at a university, so on and so forth, that they're as happy and as productive as possible. And this requires a relentless focus on experience from when they first engage with us to how they deploy and manage uh, the Juniper Mist solution on a day-to-day -day 
basis, including upgrades, troubleshooting and feature rollouts. And it might be a small enterprise IT team who have to deploy and troubleshoot a software upgrade in uh, a thousand retail stores or a network security manager who has to protect application servers from new ransomware without inadvertently impacting the application services. Or it could be a cloud architect in at the hottest digital consumer company who needs to quickly deploy and tune new services as they continue their growth tier. Now, by making experiences the network's priority, we enable those users, our users, to build agile networks, to leverage DevOps approaches, and to lead the digital transformation the way that they're the way that they're driving. So, in summary, miss, uh, missed client level visibility. Our true north experience first the ability to ascertain service level expectations for the different domains wireless wired and sd wan client to cloud ai operations and support ai is the driving heart it is the engine of mist microservices cloud for agility weekly updates agile able to keep pace with network changes and digital engagement with virtual BOE, which is unique to Juniper. And all of this is underpinned by 100% API. Oh, so, as I mentioned previously, you know, please do contact sales at hardware.com with any queries that you may have. And I will see you for the next session which is where we will dive into more detail into the service level expect expectations or SOEs. Thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. And please secure your place at this next exciting session. Thank you. Goodbye.